part one, we set up our first instant orchestra instrument and connected ARIA with our recording program, Sonar. Now let's investigate the controls. Using the on-screen modulation wheel, we can hear this sound morphs between strings, brass, and woodwinds. Using my keyboard's mod wheel, I can get a smooth transition between the layers. The mod wheel in the interface is just for testing purposes. This wheel movement could be recorded as part of a project. The mod wheel is sending MIDI controller number one to ARIA. Keeping track of how ARIA interacts with the recording program, let's look at this. The volume fader on the MIDI track in Sonar controls the fader in ARIA. That default can be changed, but it's better to leave it as is. Let your recording program control ARIA's faders. It's less confusing. Now, click the word controls. And there we have all the controls available for this particular sound. They'll vary from patch to patch. ADSR controls have been added for the first time to a Garretton library. These let you customize the shape of a sound. Turn the attack knob up and the sound blooms. Attack is how slowly a sound begins. Decay is how long it takes to get to the sustain level. And release is how long it takes for the sound to fade. Attack and release are the controls you'll be using the most. Listen to the results. The brightness knob, logically enough, increases the brightness of the sound. Notice these knobs are labeled with CC numbers, MIDI control numbers. We'll be using those as this project develops. The low pass filter attenuates signals with frequencies higher than the cutoff frequency. And the high pass filter does the opposite. Recording automation data for this control could give you some interesting sweeping effects. Two knobs control the vibrato. Vibrato amount is controlled by aftertouch, vibrato speed by CC17. Most of the time you want to record data for these controls so they're not just static at one setting. We're moving these knobs with our cursor mostly for auditioning purposes. Cursor movements can't be recorded. The saturation knob adds harmonic richness to the sound. It increases the volume, but it's doing more than just that. The blend 1, 2, and 3 knobs are unique to the blending textures, like this Easy Strings patch. They set the relative volume of each layer. The Stereo Stage knob creates a more three-dimensional sound image, and it's usually best to leave it on. The equalizer knobs aren't moved by MIDI control. You do set and forget those. Depending on the sound you want, you can boost or reduce the amount of low frequencies. And like many equalizers, the mid section has two controls. You choose the frequency and the amount of gain or reduction of gain. Like with all of these knobs, the best thing to do is grab them and experiment to see what the results are. After you have a number of tracks in your project, you'll find the equalizer will help you balance the sounds. For now, we have a starting point with the sound. We can return to the control page as much as we want as the music develops. You don't have to have a fancy keyboard to make instant orchestra work. All MIDI controllers can be drawn in. We'll get to that. We're ready to make some music. Next time, we'll start improvising our theme.